there and welcome to the user guides of my target selection video series. The purpose of the user guide is just to help you get the most out of the guides and also to answer a few perhaps obvious questions about how the guides have been put together. I'm going to start by talking about framing considerations. When you're choosing a target you need to understand how it's going to frame in your field of view of your sensor uh, with your telescope set up. So you need to know the apparent size of the target in the sky which is actually provided in the top left corner of each of the slides that I show for each of the individual targets. And you also need to know the angular field of view of your telescope setup. Now you can calculate that field of view yourself very easily and it's done as follows. You take 3438, seems a weird number, but you take that number, multiply it by the width of your sensor in millimetres and then divide the answer by your focal length of your telescope in millimetres. So for example, if you have an 800mm telescope with a 25mm wide sensor, then it would be 3438 times 25 divided by 800, and that would give you 107 arc minutes wide. And all of the numbers displayed on the top left corner of the slides are given in arc minutes, so you can immediately see how much of the field of view. So for example, if it is an object that's 80 arc minutes wide, and you've got 107 arc minutes field of view, it's going to fit in very nicely with a bit of space around the edges. Remember that if you're using a focal reducer, you need to modify your telescope focal length in the equation by multiplying it by the uh, factor first, so it's a 0.7 times focal reducer, and multiply your telescope focal length by 0.7. There are many tools as well to help you with framing. Uh, if you're not familiar with them already, yeah, you can use a framing tool in uh, Stellarium. Uh, Sky at Night magazine have got a calculator of, of field of view on their website. The link is here. Sequence Generator Pro has an excellent framing and mosaic wizard. Nina also has a framing assistant. The Astronomy Tools website has a field of view calculator and so on. There's lots of different uh, resources available out there for you to work out your field of view. Now aside from framing there are some other things that we need to consider and that begins with the, your horizon. Depending on where you're imaging from there will be various obstructions in your way. You won't have a zero horizon in all directions I imagine. Uh, there may be trees, houses or other obstructions in the way. So uh, it's important to understand how this affects your opportunity to image a target. You can actually set up a custom uh, landscape in Stellarium, which is a really useful thing to do. You just take pictures in a series of directions, process them a, a little and then you can import them into Stellarium. I've made a video on how to do that and I'll put the link to that video at the end of this video. But I highly recommend that, it's a really a powerful capability that it gives you. The next thing to consider is the altitude of the target when you're imaging it. Remember, it's better to image a target when it's higher in the sky because you're looking through less atmosphere. Some targets get much higher in the sky than others. Uh, it depends on their position on the celestial sphere and on your latitude. Also, it's important to consider unwanted light, in particular the moon. The phase and the position of the moon relative to your target makes a big difference to how much the moonlight uh, upsets your, the background of your image, especially when you're shooting either with a one-shot colour camera or with a monochrome camera and LRGB filters. The less moonlight, the better. Uh, if you're using narrowband filters, those filters do actually cut out most of the light from the moon. And so if it's an option for you to shoot narrowband with a monochrome camera, uh, when there's a lot of moon around then that could be the better way to go for you. And also of course in terms of unwanted light, light pollution whether it's a neighbour's security light or street lights for example uh, are also something uh, to think about. Maybe you want to ask your neighbour to, uh, to turn off their security light but that's not really part of the process of choosing a target. just want to say a few words about what targets I've included in the videos. The first thing is I've included targets I believe are visible uh, from locations between 30 and 55 degrees north. Secondly, I've chosen targets that I believe are large enough uh, for you to get decent images using typical astrophotography setups. So extremely small targets have been excluded from the videos deliberately. I've used uh, targets from my own personal database of targets which I've been building up over the last four or five years. Uh, but I am human and I'm sure there will be things that are missing that I should have included. So I'd really appreciate your feedback in the comments. Let me know if I've missed out a really nice target somewhere uh, and I'll try to include that in the future. 
I thought I'd just show you where the trajectory plots come from that I include in the guide videos. They come from this piece of software here which I've written myself, taking quite a few years to write. And this essentially displays all of the objects in my target database uh, on the night sky with the map of the stars and the constellations and allows me to kind of browse around the sky. I can zoom in and rotate and uh, I can click on an object and see a picture of it. I can see how it will frame in a particular sensor for example and I can click on object trajectory and see how that target is going to move through the night sky uh, on any given date and time. You'll notice it's got a custom horizon facility but I've set that horizon to zero uh, all the way in all directions for the purposes of the guide videos. Finally I just want to say a few words about the images that I've used in the guides. Essentially I've used images that I think are nice images and also for ones for which I have permission to use the images if I didn't take them myself. All that remains is for me to wish you clear skies and uh, invite you to come back next time to watch next month's guide video. Bye for now.